Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It has been a long time since I have posted a new video, so I thought of covering a previous video in detail. In this video, I will be talking about multi copy paste, a cross platform application that I had created on Cube. I will be giving in depth idea of uh, how I added dynamic queue widgets, queue tab widgets, buttons, etc. For specific information, you can refer to the timestamps in the description below. Now, this application is not only useful for your day to day use, but will also help you understand how to add dynamic queued widgets. Thus, I would recommend you to stick till the end of this video. Also, do subscribe to the channel for more such interesting projects. Now before we dive into the programming aspect, let's have a look at the application itself. You can also check out my video on this application which I had posted on YouTube last year. Right now I'm running it from the source code directly itself. Um, you can see we have the option to add new cells and then uh, also add new tab. In these new cells you can also change the cell name as per your description. So for example over here I'm writing the name and you can specify your name over here. Now with the help of a button you can actually create new cell. With click of a button you can actually copy, paste and clear your data according to your own need and even if you want to delete a cell you can do that as well. Now you see that I have added a new tab and if I double click on the tab uh, I can also have the option to change its name. Okay, now if I go to the file, I also have the option to save the complete format. So everything will be saved in a JSON file. Now if I run the application again, all I have to do is go to the file and load. And from there I'll select the same file again and as you can see those tabs have been added. Alright, so uh, and you can also delete those tabs according to your own need and also I've added some template whatever piece of code uh, that you use very frequently you can actually save it over here and then uh, reuse them whenever you want yes so this was like a very quick introduction about the application itself if you want you can head to the faq portion as well where it will redirect you to the uh, to my website right uh, over there you can actually download it for windows and for linux for mac also it will work but uh, you'll have to compile it on your own using the source code i have also added the link for the github uh, on this you'll find the complete source code of uh, how exactly i have done this so just in case you're curious about the complete project and you want to know uh, like if you want to dive into the source code then please go ahead and check it out okay so let's get started first we'll actually create a new uh, cute application you can name it whatever you want i'm now the class name i'm keeping it as copy paste as of now click on next and select the kit so for now i'm using cute 5.15 if you want to have uh, version control you can add that as well i'm not added in this but uh, in the original project i've actually used it okay so let's see first uh, if everything is compiling well or not okay yeah so everything seems to be fine we'll go ahead and reorganize our project so what i like to do is create uh, three folders that is for your header files source files and for your ui files so i'll quickly do that and uh, transfer all those files in those folders now in order to use those files you will actually have to change your project file so head back to your project and then add the include path and v path right in the sources you do not need to do anything as such but uh, in your headers every header file you will have to specify from the folder like you will have to add the reference and also for the forms we'll just uh, try to recompile and see if everything is working fine yeah okay great so let's move on to the uh, UI aspect. So as you can see on the screen in the screenshot, uh, we'll be making such an um, almost a similar UI. So first thing I'll just do in the file, I'll add load and open. Right now I'll not be adding the functionality, but uh, this is just for the later use. So 
so the first thing that I'll uh, we'll be doing is uh, we need to add a layout so for that I'm using vertical layout and inside the vertical layout I will be adding the cube tab widget right and uh, you can clearly see by default tab 1 and tab 2 are added which we do not require as of now so you can just go ahead right click on it and then um, go to page 1 of 2 and click delete do the same for tab 2 as well now you have a clean Q tab widget all right so once your tab widget is added i'll be also adding a Q push button that will be basically be responsible for adding new tabs in our widget all right now you can rename the buttons so for the complete application i'm setting the layout as horizontal layout So what this will uh, enable you is even if you resize your window, uh, things will not get messed up and uh, all the widgets and application, it'll, it'll automatically resize. Now what we need to do is add the functionality to have uh, dynamic tabs. So for that, I'll be creating a new widget and select Qt designer form class and click on choose. Select the one uh, like normal widget as of now. Here you need to enter the class details. So for me, uh, since it's a new tab, so I'll be naming the cl class as uh, tab new and click on next and finish. Okay, so before doing that, um, I'll be changing the destination for all the classes. That is first in the folder and then in the project file itself. So let me just quickly do that. We'll have to design a new tab window so every time you click the add new button automatically this particular widget will be added in in the tab so for the first thing we'll be having a grid layout so that you know if you want you can have uh, multiple cells uh, added then uh, once you have added the grid layout you can actually have a q push button so this push button will be responsible for adding new cells so those are basically your data cells right now what you can do is uh, give the whole thing as vertical layout so this is also organized and you can actually resize it according to your own need click save and head back to your source so in the header file the first thing that uh, you require in the copy paste header file is uh, you know basically having a add function uh, this function will be responsible for you know calling the tab new class and adding it so in the add tab uh, the input will be our tab name now you can go to refactor and add the definition in the source file itself so in the header file first you need to do is include q strings as soon as you initialize the copy paste class you actually need to have a new tab by default so you remember we have uh, removed tab 1 and tab 2 so by default we need to have a default tab right and also in the header file itself i will be including the tab new header file okay so uh, what i've done is basically i've pasted the code from from my previous code that i've written i'll quickly explain what exactly is there in this code yeah before that i we should actually just resolve these uh, errors so for that i'll I include the q vector class and define a vector basically which will store the pointer of all the tabs that we'll be creating right so in this code what is happening is i'm creating a new tab pointer and giving the copy paste class as its parent then i'm adding this uh, tab you know in the tab widget and attributes is delete on close automatically and appending this uh, in the pointer itself so that you know we have the reference of this particular uh, tab whenever we want to do any changes in it now if you run the code okay yeah, before that uh, we actually need to have assigned functionalities so as soon as we click on this button uh, it should call the add new function i'll be taking the count of how many tabs i have and based on that i'll be adding the count one like i'll be adding one to the count and that will be our tab name so if i run this code now Uh, you can see by default we have the default tab now if I click on add new tab uh, 
the new tabs are added but still we don't have the functionality to you know close them so head to the ui part and click on tabs closable we need to enable that but just doing that will not help us it has now given us the icon but we are not actually able to close it so for that uh, i'll right click on it we need to add a slot for it so this is a tab close requested and uh, int is nothing but your index right so i've pasted my code let's uh, remove these errors for that i will be including the queue box queue message box sorry so the first thing is that uh, i'm defining a standard button and with a question like uh, delete confirmation with the yes and no okay let me just also add the queue debug over here quickly all right so the next thing is uh, basically closing using the pointer right so we had already saved all the pointers and from there i'm sending the close and removing the tab from the tab widget and also removing the same element from our vector also in the last you see i have also added a condition that uh, if the tab pointer length basically our vector length is zero then by default it should add a tab the default tab and this is something that in this status bar it will show for three seconds that uh, default tab has been added so if i give you a quick demo so now you have the option to actually close your tabs now if i close the default one you see already uh, added a default tab so that you know at least you have something on your window so i hope you enjoyed this video basically in which i had told you how you can have dynamic uh, queue tab widgets and you can add as many as you want i will quickly show what exactly i'll be telling you in the next video in the next video we will be covering how you can actually you know create dynamic cells so in that cells you have uh, you have text class you also have your q push buttons and uh, a lot of different things will be there so hope you subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for the next video thanks for watching